Dear students, under the topic partial differential equations, we are going to learn Lagrange's linear partial differential equations. So, by definition, the partial differential equation of the form capital P multiplied with small p plus capital Q multiplied with small q is equal to capital R is known as the Lagrange's linear partial differential equation where P, Q and R are functions of X, Y and Z. And small p is, is equal to dou Z by dou X. That is differentiation of Z partially with respect to X. And small q is equal to differentiation of Z partially with respect to Y. Which we have already seen by learning about the formation of PDE by eliminating arbitrary constants and arbitrary functions. So that is what P and Q is. So now... This equation is known as the Lagrange's linear partial differential equation. We shall now learn how to solve this kind of equation. So the method of solving Lagrange's equation. The first step is we have to form the auxiliary equations. That is the auxiliary equation is given by dx by capital P is equal to dy by capital Q is equal to dz by capital R. So, this equation is known as the auxiliary equations. We have to first form this equation by taking the values of P, Q and R from the given Lagrange's partial differential equation and substituting in this auxiliary equation. And this auxiliary equation we can mark dx by P as 1 and this as 2 and this as 3. So that while comparing the equations while solving it, it will be easy for us to remember. Then step 2 is to solve the auxiliary equation and find the two independent solutions that is u of x comma y comma z and equal to c1 and v of x comma y comma z is equal to c2. So while solving the auxiliary equation we will adopt two methods that is the first method that we will be using is method of grouping. And if not this method, then the next method that we will be using is method of multipliers. So these are the two methods that is used while solving the auxiliary equation of the uh, given Lagrange's equation. And after solving, we will be getting the solution in terms of in a function in a, which will be function of x, y or y, z or x, z. And those two solutions will be taken as C1 and C2. As the third step, we have to write the final solution of the given Lagrange's equation, which will take the form phi of u, v equal to 0. Or that function can be capital F also. F of u, v is equal to 0. So this is just the representation. Either you may use phi or capital F as per the prescribed textbook. So these are the three methods that we will be using in order to solve the uh, uh, method of solving the Lagrange's equation. Now, I told you while solving the auxiliary equation, we have method of grouping and method of multipliers. So, let us see what are they. Now, first we here we have method of grouping. Under method of grouping, we can use two ways. That is, the first way is variable separable method and then the direct integration for both the solutions u and v. So, we have to we, we, we will mark the auxiliary equation as equation 1, 2 and 3 and compare any of the two and find the uh, well, that is the function u and v by direct integration. Or if this method is not successful, then we will use the variable separable method for one of the solution and after finding that solution, we will make a substitution of the first solution in order to find the second solution. So, if this method is not successful, we have to adopt this method. So, these are the two methods that we will be using under method of grouping, which you will be understanding better while solving a problem under them. Next will be the method of multipliers for which we have to choose any three arbitrary multipliers in such a way that the we, we can write the auxiliary equation in this form. That is, we are multiplying L with the first equation, M with the second equation and N with the third one. And we are adding them. You can see that the numerators are added separately and the denominators also. 
and when when we do so we can we will find that the denominator will diminish that it will become zero in that case the numerator can also be equated to zero and again by direct integration we may obtain the solution of the uh, lagrange's partial differential equation and once we get the first solution in a similar manner we can choose other kind of multipliers and find the second solution you will be understanding this better when we solve the problem so let us learn first problem under the topic method of grouping so now we shall learn the lagrange's linear partial differential equations and problems under them we will be using the first method now that is the method of grouping under that problem 1 solve xp plus yq is equal to z when we see this equation we understand that it is given in the form capital p small p plus capital q small q and capital which is equal to capital r where capital p is equal to x capital q is equal to y and capital r is equal to z so let us first write the standard form of this equation and compare it so as the first step i am taking and writing the given equation that is xp plus yq is equal to z and let me mark this as equation 1 now let me write the standard form of the lagrange's equation so this is the standard form that is capital p small p plus capital q small q is equal to capital r now comparing the uh, first equation that we have marked that is roman letter 1 and the standard form we see that capital p is equal to x and capital q is equal to y and capital r is equal to z so let us write that now so we have taken and we have written that so the next step is we have to form the auxiliary equation that is step 2 so let us do that now what is the auxiliary equation we we learned that the auxiliary equation is given by dx by capital p is equal to dy by capital q is equal to d z by capital r so let us write that now so we have written the auxiliary equation which is this now let us substitute p q and r in this that is dx by what is capital p it is x is equal to dy by what is capital q y is equal to d z by r so capital r is z so d z by z so we have got the auxiliary equation now let us make a mark for this as 1 and this as 2 and this as 3 so that it will be easy for us to mention while comparing now next step is we have to find the solution by comparing two equations from these three so first what we will do we will compare equation 1 and equation 2 and this is our choice we can start with 1 and 2 or 1 and 3 or comparing 2 and 3 it is absolutely our choice so i am making a choice of comparing the first equation and the second equation so first step is comparing equation 1 and 2 so comparing 1 and 2 what do we get what is equation 1 it is dx by x is equal to what is 2 dy by 2 by y so th this these two alone now we are going to compare so while comparing we can find the solution by direct integration because already the variables are separated we have completely x over here and we have completely y over here so already the variables are separated if the variables are not separated then we have to separate them and then we have to do the direct integration now but since here already the variables are separated we can move on to direct integration of this so integrating on both the sides the next step is integrating on both the sides so i have written that here so integrating on both the sides we get so what do we get let us see the integration of this now now i have taken and written here what is integration of dx by x by the integration formula we know that the integral dx by x is log x is equal to what about integration of dy by y again it is log y because the variable here is y and because both the terms are log the constant that we add should also be log and this is the first uh, equations that we are comparing so we are taking the constant as c1 so log x is equal to log y i mean uh, log y plus log c1 
Now let us take this log y to the left. So we get log x minus log y is equal to log c1. So after integration this is what we get. Now here we can use a logarithmic formula. There is a logarithmic formula which says that log a minus log b is equal to this can be written as log a by b. So now we are going to use this formula over here. So here at the place of a we have x and at the place of b we have y. So log a minus log b is what? Log a by b. So log here at the place of a we have x divided by at the place of b we have y. So log x by y is equal to log c1. Comparing on both the sides since we have logarithm on both the sides we can equate x by y to be equal to c1 and therefore we have obtained the first solution c1 so we have to write it in the form of u so therefore the first solution is u is equal to x by y so this is the first solution the constant c1 that we obtain gives us the first solution so u is equal to x by y is the first solution in a similar manner we have to evaluate the second solution v by comparing the other two equations which we have not chosen previously. Previously what did we choose? We chose equation 1 and 2. So if you see in this equation we chose equation 1 and 2 and we compared 1 and 2 and then integrated. Now let us leave 1 and 2. We can choose either 1 and 3 or we can choose 2 and 3. It is absolutely our choice. So I am going to make a choice of 2 and 3. And I am going to compare the second and the third one. So let us see that now. So comparing equation 2 and 3 what do we get? We get dy by y is equal to dz by z. So this is equation 2 and this is equation 3. So we are comparing this now. Now integrating on both the sides with respect to x. I mean integrating on both the sides what do we get? So integrating on both the sides we have integral dy by y is equal to integral dz by z. Now let us integrate. What is the integration of dy by y? It is log y. And this is equal to what is the integration of dz by z? It is log z. And because both are log, we will be having log c2. The second constant we can take as c2. And now this log z can be taken to the left as we did in the previous steps. So log y minus log z is equal to log c2. And now again using the same concept log a, a minus log b is equal to log a by b. We can write this as logarithm of y by z is equal to logarithm of c2. Now because both the sides we have logarithm we can write y by z is equal to c2. And this is the second solution. So the constant c2 is equal to y by z and hence we have the second solution v to be equal to the constant c2 which is y by z. So that gives us the second solution. And what was our first solution that we obtained? We obtained the first solution u is equal to x by y. And how do we write the final solution? We already saw that the final solution we will write as phi of u comma v is equal to 0. Now here what is u? x by y. And what is v? y by z. So we have to take and substitute here. And so the final general solution will be phi of u is x by y comma v is y by z and that is equal to 0. So the, this gives us the final solution for the Lagrange's pa linear partial differential equation given. I hope you would have understood how to solve the Lagrange's linear partial differential equation by applying the method of grouping. This is the first problem which is a very simple problem. So we will learn more problems by using the method of grouping and after which we will be learning the pro pro by solving the problems by using the method of multipliers. Thank you.